Well, thank you very much, Eric. I sure appreciate that. Um, my name is Mike Ray. I'm a senior product engineer with Sika. Uh, and today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about our uh, adhesives that we offer for auto glass replacement. Uh, just to give you a little glimpse into the team here that uh, is, is hosting this event. Uh, you can see my, my ugly mug there. Um, I'm going to be hosting here and doing, doing most of the talking. Uh, the brains behind the operation is Eric, who you heard first there, uh, part of our uh, part of our digital marketing team. Um, and then we've also got uh, our our two panelists and, and moderators, uh, Ron Combs uh, from our sales group and, and Josh Hill from the uh, from the mar also from the marketing team. So um, Ron and Josh will be answering any questions that uh, come in through the Q and A uh, panel. So please don't hesitate to get those questions in, and um, and those guys will get you uh, straightened out with answers. Uh, if by chance you don't get an answer to you, to a question that gets asked, um, it's not because we're ignoring you. It's probably a question that um, would be beneficial to be uh, answered at the end of the presentation uh, to the to the audience at large. So um, if if you don't get an answer, just hold tight, and um, and, and it'll probably be thrown my way uh, come the end of the presentation. So before we get into the the heart of the matter, just a little bit about Sika. Uh, who we are, what we do. Uh, we are a specialty chemicals company. Um, we really focus on uh, on providing solutions to customers. So it doesn't matter if you're uh, in auto glass replacement or if you're uh, or if you're making high rises, um, building bridges, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We pride ourselves on going to a, a customer, any customer, uh, understanding what they do uh, and and offer solutions in, as far as how we can make uh, their processes better. So. Uh, 25,000, over 25,000 employees uh, worldwide. Uh, we're in over 100 countries, uh, over 300 manufacturing plants. Um, last year alone, we opened six new plants. Um, we obtained 83 new patents last year. Uh, one, one new acquisition for us last year uh, and up around, uh, closing in on 8 billion um, Swiss francs in uh, net sales uh, as of last year. The types of markets that we are involved in, um, you'll see on this list a lot of construction um, applications, a lot of building envelope applications, a lot of uh, a lot of concrete and uh, tunnels and, and and roofing and flooring and, and all those good things. Um, very very big. Uh, anybody that's uh, done construction at any point in their life, they've they've come across our products. They they know who we are. Um, for today, um, and uh, for for my my role in general, we live in this uh, we live in the the industry group here. So, uh, in industry is it's kind of a catch all for us. Um, we deal with a lot of transportation is uh, industry, a lot of transportation applications. Uh, there's a little a little overview of what uh, we talk about when 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 we say industry and Sika. Um, so we're talking about uh, transportation. Uh, we're talking about automotive. We're talking about appliances and manufacturing. Uh, we're talking about renewable energy applications, um, as well as uh, vertical glass, uh, facade and fenestration, um, marine as well. Um, we really get, it's really uh, a very wide ranging uh, set of application areas for us uh, in the industry group here, but that's okay. We, we like that. Uh, we like having our, our hands in a lot of different pots and, and, and seeing and finding areas of overlap um, where we can, um, you know, really have an impact uh, on a lot of different areas. So. But uh, today we're going to be concentrating, like I said, on the automotive aftermarket. So uh, in the automotive aftermarket, um, we've been around for, for decades now. Um, our mission is always, always, always safety. Um, we perform crash tests on, on every product that comes to market. Um, over 70 crash tests performed worldwide since uh, the late 80s there. Um, and uh, like I had mentioned earlier, we really pride ourselves on, um, you know, on our level of support. Um, so no, no matter who you are, if you're a, a large customer, small customer, it doesn't matter. We want to make sure that you've got access to our sales team, um, you know, for any support that may come up, access to our technical team, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We want to be the ones that, um, you know, that are there, um, you know, giving you the level of support that maybe, uh, maybe our competition um, takes takes for granted. So. Um, that is absolutely where we, uh, you know, where we like to to live is 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 providing that level of support to to our customers. Uh, always striving for innovation, um, always looking for the next big thing, always looking to find ways that we can make life easier for our customers. So 
that's uh, that's really what we strive for here um, in uh, at Seek in general, and, and particularly in the uh, automotive aftermarket. Um, and then uh, you know you can take a look on this slide. These are the uh, the brand names that uh, that are out there for us today. Um, and we're going to go into all of these in a little bit more detail uh, as we progress through the presentation. So I won't, uh, won't won't spend too much time on them now. So when it comes to the automotive aftermarket, uh, not only do we supply the uh, polyurethane adhesives uh, for actually performing the installation, but we do have a, a lot of uh, other products as well. So um, you know, as with uh, most applications, when you're talking about an adhesive. Uh, there's almost always some sort of a, a, a cleaning and or pretreatment that goes right along with it. So we've got a wide range of uh, you know pretreatment, cleaning and pretreatment products, uh, and we also have um, you know our, our specialty adhesives and sealants. Uh, you know really for for anything that may that may come about. Uh, you see on there that uh, Seeker Force um, 315. That's a relatively new product for us. Fantastic product for uh, small component bonding and things like that. So um, you know definitely. Speak to your uh, distributor, speak to your uh, seek a sales representative and, um, you know, ask about um, the, the, the specialty adhesives and seals that we sell as well. Um, you know, that uh, that 315 is great for any any small component bonding. So I uh, definitely recommend you look at look at that. But uh, that's a presentation for another day. Today we are going to be uh, really talking about the um, the uh, the uh, urethane adhesives. So. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a preview uh, on the main topics that we're going to be touching on, uh, we really want to spend a little bit of time on the different technologies that we offer uh, when it comes to auto glass replacement adhesives. Uh, so we'll talk about our cold applied adhesives, we'll talk about our hot applied adhesives, we'll talk about our primer list to glass adhesives, and um, lastly, our uh, power cure line, uh, which is uh, another new um, another new a new system for us, a new product for us that uh, we're pretty excited about that. Um, you know, really offers some some unique benefits. So uh, we'll talk about the different technologies uh, and then just a little bit of time on conductivity and modulus. Uh, give you a little uh, a little glimpse into our driveway time charts, uh, talk about packaging and finish up the presentation with our, our, our training and support. So we do offer a wide range of technologies, a wide range of products, um, but there's a really good reason for that. And that's Every customer is a little bit different. You know, I had mentioned, um, you know, we like to be the ones that can walk into any customer and 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 talk to them, get to know what, get to know them, find out what uh, makes them tick, what uh, what's important to them, um, and make sure that we've got a product that's going to fit their needs. So, you know, why why would you pick one product over another? Well, there's lots of different factors. Um, you know, for some people, they're doing. Um, you know, maybe that they, maybe they're experiencing temperature extremes, um, and they need uh, a product that's going to be suitable for um, you know very high or very low temperatures. If it's a lot of mobile workout in Phoenix, uh, that might point you in one direction. Uh, you know, versus um, you know if you're doing work up in Anchorage uh, in January, that might point you in a very different direction. So, um, you know, for a lot of people, it's uh, it's, it's temperature concerns. Uh, for for a lot of people, it's drive away time. Um, you know, and especially with um, you know with uh, more and more vehicles requiring. Uh, 8S calibrations, um, you know, how quickly you can get that part um, set and, and how quickly you can drive that vehicle or, or perform the calibration, um, you know, that becomes a more and more important topic uh, each and every day. It's been an important topic for a long time in this industry and it keeps getting more and more important. So for a lot of people, it, uh, it really is all about that driveway time number. Um, but there might be other issues as well that, uh, that, that might point you in one direction over another. But uh, you know, for all of our products, um, regardless of technology, regardless of um, you know what may motivate you uh, to, to one product versus another, um, you know there are really two things that we wanted to highlight that that um, you know that are true of everything in our product lineup. You know, and the first one is that um, as I had mentioned, we do crash test every formulation that that makes its way to market. So um, you know, anything that you're using that um, you know that, that you'll find on on the distributor shelves. You know, we've made sure that we've gone through the, uh, you know, the exercise of, of crashing that per FMVSS 212 with a passing result. You know, the last thing um, we ever want, uh, you know, is 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 for um, one of our products, uh, you know, to be of uh, any sort of safety concern. So um, everything that we do is is directed at, at, at providing our customers with a with a safe product, um, and the crash test is a big part of that. 
So um, you know that's that's something that we we include with every every product that we that we uh, that we sell. Uh, we want to make sure that those are are, are proven safe uh, with an actual crash test. I think I've I've lost track of my number at this point. I think it's somewhere around eighteen or nineteen crash tests that I've done um, that I've actually been uh, been a part of uh, from my early days here. Um, you know, just kind of watching and observing. Uh, to where now I'm, you know, running the show and 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 uh, making sure that uh, everything goes smoothly with those things. So, um, you know, we we really put a lot of time and attention uh, in, in doing these things to make sure that we're we're doing things the right way. Um, and the second thing that I wanted to mention that um, you know really is 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 more of a um, you know more true of of, of the the company in general. Is that uh, you know at Sika we we're very proud of all the OEM business that we have. Um, we we're doing glass bonding at the OEM level all over the globe. Uh, have been for a lot a, a lot of years. Um, you see a nice little nice little picture there of a robotic application of uh, of some urethane on a back glass. Um, you know we are very proud of that. We're very proud of our OEM business. Um, obviously OEMs across the globe have. Uh, very stringent requirements for for glass bonding products as as well as uh, you know anything else and and we do a, a lot of business with those guys in a lot of different application areas um, and you can see some of the statistics uh, up there in those bullet points uh, you know over seventy million car windows bonded um, uh, have been bonded with uh, with 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 Sika products uh, over twenty five million vehicles um, are made stronger and safer each year with our body shop adhesives. Um, you know, we can with uh, with some of our acoustic products, uh, we can see up to 50% reduction in uh, in interior noise uh, with some of our our baffle and and, and damping products, um, and uh, you know just to put uh, some some numbers to that, 70 million plus uh, baffle, uh, Sika baffle, Sika damp, Sika reinforcer parts uh, supplied annually. So, um, you know, we're 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 very proud of the business that we do at the OEM level, and uh, you know, it, it it's just. You know, to me, it's a it's a testament that um, you know our products are, are made the right way. They're developed the right way uh, to make sure that um, you know that we can meet the demands of uh, you know of, of the of the uh, auto manufacturers, and then we take that same philosophy and we we apply it to our aftermarket products as well. So, to the uh, meat and potatoes part of the presentation here, um, starting off with our our different technologies. Uh, you know, we'll we'll start with uh, the cold applied tech, the cold applied adhesives. It really is uh, when we talk about our cold applied adhesives, it's it's a, it's a very wide range uh, of options available. Uh, you know, to a customer looking to go this route. Um, you know, we we've got our Sikaflex 220 plus, which uh, is a, a proven uh, proven technology. Product's been around for over 20 years um, and, and is is very beloved by uh, a very loyal uh, group of customers. Um, who even to this day, you know, are 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 very happy with the product. They they don't have any problems with it. Um, but uh, like I said, that's it's a little bit of an old technology, but it's but that also means that it's that it's tried and true. So um, you know, a lot of support there. Uh, and then moving into some of our more our more uh, premium products uh, like our Mach 60 and our uh, Mach 30 XV, which is uh, the newest product in the lineup. And uh, you know, in, in in general terms, when we're talking about cold applied adhesives. Um, you know, the benefits, obviously no special equipment is needed. Um, you know, there's, uh, no need to heat the product. There's no need, uh, you know, to use a, a special, uh, a special gun. Um, there's really no, no special equipment needed. It's, it's, um, it, it's probably the, the lowest barrier to entry. It's, uh, it, it's very easy to get started going with, uh, with these products. Um. And they've been around. They've been around forever. So we we first got into the AGR market back in the early '90s with uh, with a, a one component cold applied product, Sikaflex 280, which even pre predates me, which is is kind of surprising. I feel like I've been here. I feel like I've seen them all. So uh, to uh, see a product up there that uh, that even predates my time here is uh, is, is is surprising. Um. So yeah. So so yep. Definitely uh, a lot of benefits associated with with the cold applied products. Really, um, you know, just. Uh, Give you a wide variety of options. Next on the list, uh, well, before we move on to the next technology, we, we did want to. I did want to spend a, a few minutes just kind of highlighting um, our newest product, like I had mentioned, our Sikatech Mach 30 XV. So uh, I'm sure a lot of people uh, were familiar with the old Mach 30 product. Well, we took that product and uh, just made it a little bit better. So um, what we did was uh, increase the viscosity on that product. 
um, really to give you uh, better glass slip down performance. Um, so it's it, it's really it, it's really an extremely nice product. Um, you know, really no no slip uh, no glass slip to speak of. Uh, even if, uh, as the temperatures get, go up and up and up and up, and uh, in in some of the hotter areas of the com country, um, really excellent slip performance. Uh, very very short cutoff string. Um, you know, excellent decking characteristics. Uh, you know, prevent that uh, that that windshield from from uh, smashing down all the way to the pinch weld, which nobody wants. Um, you know, doesn't. Uh, you know, especially at the higher temperatures, nobody wants that. So, uh, really kept a very close eye on those properties. Um, and develop the XV to be, uh, you know, really superior in in those areas. Areas. The other thing we did uh, with the release of the of the improved version here, the XV, was to put it in the wide mouth cartridges. Um, you know, which is, you know, as uh, a lot of people who have used uh, the higher viscosity products with the uh, with the the standard standard for us, uh, you know, the more narrow cartridges, they can get a little bit difficult to pump out uh, through that narrow opening. So, you know, as the viscosity goes up. Um, you know, we're going to open that uh, that opening up a little bit further uh, to make for easier dispense. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, really uh, 30, 30 minute drive away time and in, in most conditions, um, non conductive all in one modules. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit uh, application from uh, all the way from 0 degrees all the way up to 120. So, really, no matter where you're at from Anchorage to, uh, to Phoenix, um, you know, you've got a product that you can use um, year round. Um, and uh, like I like I said, um, you know, available in the in the nice wide mouth cartridges as well as um, the two different size uh, unit packs as well. So moving on to the next product category, our hot applied adhesives, Seek uh, Attack Ultra Fast Two, Seek Attack ASAP Plus. Um, anybody that's ever used a hot applied product, uh, you know, uh, from Seeka. Uh, I think would probably be of the opinion that there really is no um, better, there are no better products in terms of application characteristics, application properties. They really do offer best in class application properties, and and not only not only that, but uh, it's consistent. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you're um, you know in in Phoenix or in Anchorage, um, those application properties are this always the same because the product is coming out at the same temperature every time. So, you know, a really, you know, really consistent, uh, high quality products, um, you know, regardless of location, regardless of, uh, you know, the, the condition that you might find yourself in. So, um, you know, that's why uh, that's why people use <laughs> that's why they get used. Right. That's why the hot apply products get used is because of, you know, the, the, the top notch application properties uh, and the consistency there. Um, Hot applied technologies uh, in AGR for Sika go all the way back uh, to the early 90s with uh, the original Sika Tech UltraFast, um, and then uh, continued with uh, the UltraFast 2, which came out uh, a, a couple of years after that. So, um, you know, we've we've been in the hot applied business for a long time, um, and these products have had a lot of staying power in there. And there's a reason for it. They really are. They really are nice. You know, the only downside, um, really, the only downside is the special equipment and the heating time that, that is required with them. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for so many people driving from location to location, um, usually the, uh, the, the heating time is, is less of an issue. Uh, Ultrafast 2 does offer a 60-minute uh, drive-away time at all conditions, and uh, Seek Attack ASAP Plus, 30-minute drive-away time at all conditions. So, um, different options there depending on uh, what, what your particular requirements may be. So, moving on to the next category, our Primalist to Glass Adhesives. And, you know, the benefits there, you know, are right there uh, in the name, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, being able to remove a step in the installation process uh, can be very beneficial, um, saves time. Um, there's never any question of, oh, did I, you know, did I forget to perform that step? Uh, you know, you don't, you never have to worry about that with the uh, primalist to glass. Um, and, uh, you know, when we developed these products and, and came out with them again, you know, like I had mentioned with the, uh, the Mach 30 XV, we paid a lot of attention to uh, the decking characteristics and the in the glass slip characteristics, and and, and wanted to put out a product that uh, not only offered um, you know or, or products I should say that uh, offered not only um, you know the ability to to bond to glass and, and ceramic frit uh, without the need for pre treatment, but also were nice products <laughs> you know to, that were were easy to use. Um, you know, uh, give you the pro properties that, um, you know, that, that uh, you might normally associate with a more premium product, 
um, but uh, you know, but but with the with the promise the glass version. So uh, driveway times are a little bit longer um, with these products. Just 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 the nature of the beast. Um, so uh, you're looking at uh, six hour driveway time for for the P to G and 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 down to three hours with the with the P to G plus. Um, you know, but both products really you know offer that um, you know nice short cutoff string. Good, good decking, good glass slip. Um, you know that we like to uh, we like to think, you know, are associated with all of our products. So we uh, at Seca we had our uh, Seca Flex P to G came out uh, in 2017, which was the uh, the um, the approved version of our original um, primeless to glass products, um, the the Titan P to G and P to G Plus, which uh, had come out back in 2010. So. Moving on to our last category of products, um, our power cure adhesives. So, uh, if anybody is not familiar with uh, with the power cure line of products here that we offer at Sika, I definitely recommend um, you ask some questions, get familiar with it. Uh, it really is a, a very very nice piece of engineering that was uh, accomplished over uh, by our friends over in Switzerland. I don't. I don't like to give them too much credit over there, but uh, they really did a nice job with the uh, with the engineering side of things. Um, you know, creating uh, from scratch a dispenser that can dispense a, a a boosted product. So it's a, you know, it this is a uh, it's a standard one component polyurethane uh, in the Unipack here, and then attached to it is a uh, is a is a sleeve that contains a, a booster paste or an accelerator paste, and um, what happens uh, the magic that happens in the dispenser itself is that um, you're you're actually dosing the uh, the adhesive you're dosing the booster and then there's actually a mechanism that uh, spins a dynamic mixer that exists in the nozzle itself um, and mixes the product mixes the uh, the adhesive and the, and the booster and what you can get with that is very 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 fast cure times so um, you know, with uh, with our Seek Attack uh, Elite Power Cure, which uh, I think is the next slide here, um, you get a 30 minute driveway time. Um, but then what you get on top of that is uh, what we would call a cure to an OEM level uh, in one hour time. So what that means is that um, you've got uh, an adhesive that is fully cured back to the you know back to the condition it was when the customer first drove it off the the, the lot. You get you know all the the body stiffness and uh, you know torsional stiffness that um, come aso that are associated with uh, a fully cured adhesive, um, you know within one hour time. So it, it's just it's an additional layer of of, of safety and an additional layer of support. Um, you know if you're doing uh, recalibrations, um, you know that uh, you've got an adhesive that's that's going to be fully cured. There's no uh, opportunity for um, you know additional movement or or anything like that, even in extreme situations where maybe. Uh, you know, maybe there's some some you know uh, some torsion imparted into the vehicle body by somebody parking on a curb or something like that. Um, there, there's no concerns with with anything like that because the, the product is is literally the exact condition it was when it rolled off the uh, when it rolled off the lot uh, in 60 minutes. And uh, you know to to prove this um, again to go back to what our our friends over in Europe had uh, had done. Um, this is an actual actual photo. This is not a recreation. It's not Photoshop. This was an actual uh, media event hosted by our friends over there, where they installed a windshield with uh, with the with the Sigatech Elite Power Cure product, and 60 minutes after uh, installation, that car was hoisted up by the windshield, um, and, uh, and and everything stayed in place. So, uh, you know, really a, a, an impressive piece of technology uh, for anyone who's looking to really differentiate themselves from uh, from the competition. Um, and add an extra la level, extra layer of uh, of safety into uh, every installation. Um, you know, the, the Power Cure system and the Seek Attack Elite is a, is a really, a really nice way of doing that. So that covers the different uh, the different technologies that we offer and the different uh, products that uh, we offer in each technology. Um, so to move on a little bit here, um, wanted to spend a couple minutes and talk about conductivity and modulus. Uh, just for anybody who maybe uh, is is uncertain about uh, why these things are important and where they come into play, uh, we'll start with the uh, non-conductive urethanes. Um, we all we use it as uh, you know across the industry we say non-conductive. It's a little bit of a uh, a misnomer, I guess. Um, you know anything any of the uh, urethanes that are that are in the uh, the market 
Um, they're all they're all black colored. Uh, they all contain carbon black, and that carbon black does conduct a little bit of electricity. So when we talk about non-conductive urethanes, we mean that the, the level of conductivity is actually below a certain threshold. So, um, you know, so why is that important? Why is that necessary? Well, you know, sometimes maybe you've got um, you know like a backlash with a with a rear heater, or maybe you've got uh, you know a uh, um, a, a windshield warming uh, dock. Uh, things like that, where you need a little, or maybe you've got an in, antenna uh, integrated into the windshield. I think that might be a little dated at this point. I'm not sure if anybody's still doing that, but uh, you know, there there are reasons why you would want to make sure that um, that you've got a level of insulation between uh, the glass part and the and the vehicle it, itself. So uh, it, those are the cases where we want to make sure that we're using a urethane that is rated as non-conductive. And like I said, non-conductive means lo low enough to, to to pass a certain threshold. Um, but we will, we'll continue to use the term because, uh, be, you know, just because it, 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 that's the way we've done things and it, it makes, makes it a little bit easier. So, uh, so that's why you might uh, want to use a, a non-conductive urethane, uh, high modulus urethanes. Well, you know, different automotive manufacturers have different requirements. So, um, you know, a lot of, uh, especially the, the domestics, uh, tend to use, uh, what we would call a, a standard, your standard mod modulus urethane. Um, versus maybe some of the imports, uh, you know, I think specifically some of the German manufacturers, they like to use something that's a little bit stiffer. So, you know, modulus is just a measure of stiffness. If you if you push on it, how much is it going to move, right? Or if you if you pull on it, how much is it going to stretch? Uh, that's what we mean by modulus. Um, and uh, you know, every every manufacturer has got a little bit uh, different opinion about what makes the most sense for you know for for their design purposes. Um, and what we found out, um, you know, several years ago um, uh, here at Sika is that, you know, really, if we kind of split the difference and and hit that sweet spot right in the middle of a standard modulus and a high modulus, well, we've got ourselves a product that uh, actually is suitable for all installations. So um, we uh, we coined that term all in one modulus, uh, and and most of our products, just I think every, just about everything that we release these days, um, especially on the on the more premium side. Uh, is is going to be an all-in-one module, so that means they're suitable for standard standard modules vehicles as well as for high modules vehicles. And uh, so there, you can also see that table uh, with a little bit of, with a with a list of which one one of our products offer all-in-one modules, which ones offer uh, non-conductive uh, properties, and uh, you can see most of them. Most of the products in the lineup uh, do offer both. Uh, next topic, um, drive away time charts. So I'm sure just about anybody that's in this industry is, have seen these at some point in time or another. Um, and, you know, what we mean by minimum drive away time um, specifically is that, uh, you know, after the, the windshield gets decked, that's when we start our timer. How long after that windshield gets decked uh, do you have to wait um, in order to be able to pass a crash test? So, uh, you know, we're always looking at FMVSS 212, uh, you know, frontal crash test 30 miles an hour. Um, with, uh, you know, with vehicles with, uh, with dual airbags, um, how long do you have to wait after that windshield gets decked before uh, you're able to pass that, uh, that, that FMVSS crash test? And we did, uh, a, we had a previous, uh, previous webinar, all, webinar all about crash tests and driveway times. And, you know, if you're, if you're curious to learn, um, you know, to go more in depth on this topic, Definitely recommend you you reach out to your your sales rep and, and ask them about that. And we could um, make that available as well if uh, if for anybody who maybe wasn't uh, able to catch that in depth uh, uh, webinar uh, regarding uh, crash tests and driveway times. Um, you know, but every product is a little bit different. Um, so for some products, you may see a very wide range of times um, depending on uh, the temperature and humidity at the time of installation. So uh, just as an illustrative um, example here, we've got uh, Sika Plus 220 Plus, um, and you can see there's a very, very wide range of, uh, of times, you know, down from some conditions where we really wouldn't recommend it because, you know, the, uh, the strength buildup time, it, it's just, it, it takes too long. We need a certain level of temperature. We need a certain level of humidity in the air uh, in order to make that reaction proceed further. Um, so, you know, so we go from not recommended conditions all the way up to, uh, you know, really the hot humid conditions uh, where we can start to get that number uh, down to something a little bit more reasonable. And we contrast that with, um, you know, a product like our Sigatech ASAP, 
where you know there it does really at that point it doesn't matter what the temperature is you know anywhere from zero to 120 doesn't matter how much humidity is in the air um you know we can expect a, a, a 30 minute driveway time um you know a, across that entire temperature range uh, you know regardless of uh, how much humidity is in the air um you know we can achieve that uh you know that that uh, that level of safety uh at, at the 30 minute mark so um definitely recommend you always have a, a copy of the uh, driveway time chart for whatever product you're using um so that uh you know we'll make sure that uh, you know every every installation is safe and that we're not putting a, a vehicle on the road too soon um you know driveway time charts are also an indication of of when you can do uh recalibrations as well so um you know especially you know more and more uh calibrations are are on the road uh, with dynamic calibrations and we definitely don't want to take anything on the road that uh, that hasn't reached its driveway time so um you know so this is uh, an indicator of that as well of when we can actually take uh you know do the recalibration process moving along um spent a little bit of time on packaging um you know we really um are very proud of some of our unipack uh packaging designs here and the reason i say that um you know uh, several years ago we set out to 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 kind of try and optimize what's that ideal um volume uh, for a unipack that uh really comes out to where one unipack will will do one job um the overwhelming majority of the time and where we landed with that was the 465 milliliter unipack um and, and what i can say you know from the, knowing that it's been out in the in the uh, in the field for several years now is that we've really kind of um, proven that to ourselves uh, many times over that one 465 milliliter unipack uh, will do one job 97, 98% of the time. It's, um, you know, it, it's really a, a very good size, um, you know, and it really helps to, uh, you know, to minimize waste. And, um, you know, so, it, you know, with the 600 milliliter unipacks, if, you know, if uh, you're diligent about, um, you know, always using that, uh, that hockey puck at the end, of the uh, at the end of the 600 milliliter unipack you can really you know minimize waste that way um but uh, you know if you're not in that habit um you know the 465 is a really nice way of of ensuring that um you know one unipack one job uh each and every time and, and it's really proven to be consistent um you know over over the past several years uh, but you know most of our products are available in the 465 and the 600 depending on you know what makes what makes the most sense for for each and every customer so um, you know, we like to make those available and obviously cartridge packaging is, uh, still a big part of what we do. Um, and, uh, you know, more, of our, more and more of our, our products, especially like I had mentioned the, uh, the higher viscosity products, uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're moving those to the, to the wide mouth to make sure that, um, there are never any issues with, uh, with dispense on a cartridge. And then, uh, last thing on the, uh, uh on the, on the, on that side is the, uh, the, the power gear, the, the Sinky Pack Elite. That is actually a, a 400 milliliter unipack. But then there's an additional, I believe it's 20 milliliters in the uh, in the um, uh, the accelerator, the booster shoulder. So you actually get a, a 420 milliliter, uh, you know, kit with that, um, which is probably sufficient for about 90% of the vehicles that are out there today. So, um, you know, if you look at that and say, well, that's that's quite a bit less than the 465, which we know, you know, does uh, the overwhelming majority of vehicles. Well, even the the, the 400 ml Unipack with the Elite that's that's going to take care of just about anything that you're going to come across so um you know so different uh, plenty always different options uh depending on what's uh what's what's right for for each individual customer uh super kits uh super kits have been available uh you know from Sika for a long time uh continue to be uh, very popular and you know what's so nice about it is that um you've got not only the adhesive um, but you've got the uh, the pretreatment product, uh, in this case, the the Activator Pro, available in in convenient single use applicator pads, and the uh, Sika Primer 207 AGR sticks, um, ideal for pin touching up pinch weld scratches uh, and scrapes and whatnot. Um, you know, anytime that those may occur. Um, so really, really anything you need, um, you know, available in one convenient kit. Um, and I, I believe there's still uh, 15 unipacks, 15 um, uh, pads, and 15 uh, sticks. So, you know, really 15 jobs uh, start to finish uh, available in one box. So, you know, very a, a lot of convenience there associated with uh, with the super kits. 
And then, um, you know, going back to uh, real quick to to Unipax and and you know what might drive someone to uh, to to the Unipax style packaging uh, uh, as opposed to cartridges. You know, it really does tend to be um, cost effective. Uh, you're getting more more bang for your buck because the the uh, the packaging is 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 less expensive. So, um, you know, more efficient. Uh, you know, it's cost effective. Um, you're getting less waste. You know, um, a, a dumpster full of empty cartridges. You know, if you were to uh, if you had that same amount of material in Unipacks, you're talking about maybe a trash bag full. So, you know, a, a lot less waste associated with uh, with um, with the Unipacks as well as less uh, polyurethane waste as well. Um, oh, yeah, right there. So the garbage bag versus dumpster. And, um, you know, like I'd mentioned before, with the 465, it really is, you know, one unit pack, one shield, one windshield, and uh, really uh, no waste associated with that. Um, before we leave the topic of uh, unipacks, I did want to highlight one thing, um, and that is the proper unipack opening technique. I know there are a lot of different ways um, that people open unipacks. Uh, the most common one that I've seen um, is just uh, just snipping off that that clip and then uh, running the material. Uh, you know what we found. Um, you know, looking at uh, looking at our unipacks, looking at our competitors' unipacks, and just knowing the technology, knowing the packaging technology, and, and the and the process there, um, and in in talking to the vendors of of uh, you know of the, of the unipack uh, you know filling machines, all unipacks have some curing at the ends, and that's by design. Uh, when you get a little bit of curing right at that clip, that actually helps prevent moisture from uh, you know, from further intrusion down into the unipack and and and, and causing a lot greater uh, curing. So, a little bit of curing right at the clip is is actually what we want. We don't want it to be too big. Obviously, that's a, an indication that it's time to recalibrate the machine. But um, you know, a little bit of curing at at right at the clip is really um, you know is there by design and, and it's it's what we want. And if we just snip that clip off uh, and then and then start gutting the uh, the beta urethane. That little bit of cured material um, can actually come out in the dispense feed, and that's no, and we definitely don't want that. So, you know, what we found that the most effective method for opening up a unipack, just take a razor blade. You don't need to cut the whole top off. You don't need, uh, you know, to, you know, to, to do a lot with it. Just cutting a small hole is really all you need to do, um, you know, on that top part of the unipack. Don't do it on the seam. You see that, uh, let me get the pointer here. You see that uh, that uh, silver part is, is is the seam where the two sides of the unipack are are glued together. We don't want to poke there, but uh, you know anywhere else along the top of that unipack, poke a small hole. And you know what will actually happen is that um, that hole that you poke will will open up a little bit um, to allow for the proper flow of uh, of adhesive, um, you know, out of the unipack and onto the part. Um, and at the same time, now that uh, that clip will actually hold onto that cured chunk. And it will, in that uh, that small little cure chunk, will not be dispensed into into the bead itself. So you know, there's really, um, you know, th that's really the best way to keep uh, you know, to keep chunks out of uh, your dispensed bead is by you know just giving it a small little poke with a, with a razor blade uh, as opposed to actually snipping off that um, you know snipping off that clip. So the last topic, uh, and you know, it goes back to what I said from the onset here. Um, you know, we really do pride ourselves on the level of support that we offer to the field. Um, we've got people all over the country, um, you know, that are that can be uh, it, that can really be anywhere at any customer uh, in a very short period of time. Um, we're, we're we're always doing SIGA uh, trainings, uh, you know, for anybody that's interested in getting SIGA uh, certified. Um, you know, we can have a, a sales rep at your place to do the training. Um, you know, we're, we're always available. The sales guys are always available. Um, you know, uh, people, uh, support staff such as myself here in the technical department, you know, we're always available. Uh, you know, yeah, let's be honest. I mean, goofy things happen, right? Um, even in the industry we're in where it seems like we're doing the same thing day in and day out. But, uh, you know, e even with that, uh, strange things can can pop up and uh, questions pop up that, uh, you know, even you know, even though I've been in in uh, at Seeker for 20 plus years now, um, there are still questions that I get I get asked for the very first time, and um, you know, uh, that but that's what we're here for. That's uh, that's that's who we want to be as an organization. We want to be the team that uh, is providing that level of support, uh, you know, to to our customers, big and small. So um, definitely never hesitate um, to reach out uh, to, to your local sales rep. 
um, never hesitate to reach out to us here in the technical department. Um, and, and, and because that's, that's really what we're here for. We're, we're here to support, uh, we're here to support our customers. Uh, you also additionally, you know, in terms of resources, um, you can find our AGR technician training manual, um, is available uh, online on our website. So definitely, if you've never come across that, um, you know, definitely recommend you, you, you track that thing down, um, or talk, again, talk to your sales rep. Uh, they can track it down for you um, and, and make sure that uh, you understand everything that's in there because, you know, just about everything that we, we come across, um, uh, you know, uh, a day-to-day -day basis is, is covered in the manual. And then uh, for anything that's not, that's what we're here for. So just to summarize, um, you know, as the market leader in AGR, um, you know, we offer a wide range of products. We offer cold applied, hot applied, primaries to glass, accel accelerated cure, uh, power cure products. Uh, to really, you know, find exactly what it is that, um, you know, that, that, that drives our customers, what's important to them, and put a product in their hands that's that's going to um, complement what they're trying to do with their customers. So, um, you know, we're the products are they're designed to address all manner of challenges from temperature extremes to uh, you know the, the decreasing driveway times that uh, that we're all coming up across, uh, as well as uh, ease of use, you know, in terms of application properties and 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 things of that nature. You know, we we always want to provide um, you know a product that's easy to use and is going to provide a, a high level of safety for uh, you know for our customers to provide to their customers. And uh, you know, lastly, you know, our reliability has really been proven. Um, you know, over the millions of windshield replacements that we've done over the years, um, the the work that we do with the OEMs, um, you know, we honestly believe that um, you know, that everything that we do um, is done with an eye of safety, and, and we certainly hope that uh, you know that that our customers feel that as well. So. I think that um, just about wraps up what I had planned here uh, in terms of the presentation. So I guess at this time, Josh, Ron, did we have any questions come across the chat that um, that we want to address here uh, before we before we finish up? We uh, we did indeed, Mike. First of all, I'd like to say thanks uh, for uh, for this period of uh, informational learning. You've done a great job here. And Josh and I have been monitoring things throughout the course of the presentation via the chat. Uh, there were a few questions that we really thought probably made sense to let you more add uh, add some thought to in a more broad uh, in a broad fashion, and so I think the first one probably speaks to this idea that we obviously make some hot applied and cold applied adhesives. The first question asks: Can you heat seek as cold applied products uh, or primeless products in a a seek approved oven? Yeah, I definitely would not recommend putting uh, the cold applied products or the primeless or the you know PDG PDG plus. Those really shouldn't go into a seek oven. Um, you know, obviously there are uh, devices out there for for warming your, uh, you know, warming product, um, you know, and if, if you're warming them up to room temperature, you know, uh, you know, 75, 80 degrees, that's fine. No issues with that. But, um, you know, our ovens go up to 180 degrees and we definitely don't want to heat up our uh, cold applied and, and primeless to glass products up that hot. So, you know, if it's a, if it's a device that warms it to room temperature, that that's fine. No issues with that ever. Um, but but the the Sika ovens are definitely designed to be quite a bit hotter than what um, you know what those cold apply products are, are designed to handle. Got it. Thanks for that. Uh, second question speaks to uh, to the primerless to glass technology, Mike. It uh, uh, it speaks to the use of primers or activators in conjunction with with P to G materials. And maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on when it's appropriate to use a primer or an activator with a P to G material, or if it's required, and if it is when. When you think it makes sense to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think probably most importantly, uh, you know, we say primerless to glass and we talk about pre treatments. Um, you know, it, that it means just that primerless to glass. So it's, it's, you, you're not ever going to get away from uh, priming pinch weld scratches to prevent corrosion and things like that. So, you know, uh, you know, there, there is still, uh, you know, primer does still come into the equation, but, you know, it's, it, again, it's just going to be, for situations where we're, we're touching up pinch weld scratches, um, you know, maybe uh, encapsulated parts are still going to require primer, things like that. So it's really just uh, when we talk about that, it's really just uh, we're, we're talking about the adhesion to to glass and to ceramic frit, um, you know, where where we de we don't necessarily need uh, to use uh, one of our activator products or one of our primer products. Um, you know, just we do need to make sure that the glass is clean, right? Which uh, you know, I think. Probably everyone on this uh, on this webinar can uh, probably tell a horror story about um, you know about a horribly dirty piece of glass that they've encountered. I know we've got uh, we've got those stories uh, you know from doing work here in the lab. 
Um, you know, and it just seems like they're 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 more and more likely to come in uh, dirtier and dirtier. So, you know, glass cleanliness uh, does become a, a big concern. Um, we do need to make sure that we've got a clean piece of glass when we're when we're using, especially when we're using a, a primos to glass product. Um, because you know the the pretreatment products, you know, they also they 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 add a little a layer of of uh, you know a, a layer of robustness. Um, because you know they are solvented, they're so they're able to uh, maybe clean off some additional adhe um, uh, additional contamination that maybe just a glass cleaner is not. So, yeah, you know, I would say you know in general, when using a primos to glass product, you know we we do want to pay uh, pay close attention to glass cleanliness, um, you know, and we can do that uh, you know with our our power clean aid sponges, uh, really do a nice job of uh, you know removing contamination from uh, from dirty parts. Uh, but we could also do that, uh, you know, if, if someone were were interested, we could do that with our activator and primer pro uh, products as well. So there is never any concern um, uh, with compatibility about uh, using P to G or P to G plus, um, you know, with Sika Activator Pro or Sika Primer 207 AGR. So you know, if if those if that was the desired um, you know procedure for for any of our customers, uh, there's no concern about uh, you know compatibility there. Um, but really, the only thing that you actually need is, um, you know, is to, to have a, a clean piece of glass um, and we and will bond in that product bonds very well to uh, to glass and print. Fantastic, Mike, and uh, the last question here, you actually, I think uh, you offered really the perfect segue into uh, this final question It asks what glass cleaner to seek or recommend for use with as adhesives. But yet, you, you know, you spoke just a little bit about uh, the need for a, particularly when it talks of primerless glass materials, the, the need for a clean substrate, clean piece of glass. And so maybe if you could touch on, uh, you know, our standard recommendation for glass cleaners and uh, just reiterate uh, when it comes to, to, um, you know, to quality of substrate, uh, you know, what we're looking to have customers try and make sure they're, um, you know, they're assigning themselves to do. Sure. Um, you know, here in the U.S. at least, um, you know, we don't sell any uh, branded glass cleaners. Um, you know, we really, it, it's, it's been a, it was a deliberate choice on our, on our part to leave that decision uh, up to our customers. Uh, customers, uh, you know, have a lot of different preferences for a lot of different reasons. On why they would use one glass cleaner over another. So that really the only requirement that we have when it comes to glass cleaners, we never want to use anything that has an anti-static ingredient in it. And usually, I, I don't think I've ever seen it. Um, you know, it's always prominently displayed. It'll say anti-static uh, somewhere on the label or on the data sheet. So as long as we don't see that, um, really, there's no issue with uh, any glass cleaner that you hope to, that you might want to use. Um, but the glass cleaner, you know, I, I mentioned contamination. The glass cleaner has kind of taken on. An additional role, you know, in the in maybe the past uh, 10, 12 years uh, in our industry, because it turns out that glass cleaner is actually a really good uh, indicator of uh, of contamination. So, uh, you know, what we would like to see um, when it comes to the use of glass cleaner, uh, we always start by spraying that uh, spraying that part down. And again, it doesn't matter if you're using a foaming glass cleaner or a liquid glass cleaner. Um, but what we what we always want to look for when we spray that uh, when we first spray that part with glass cleaner. We want to see if that uh, glass cleaner wets out nicely on the surface, or if it actually starts to bead up on you. Uh, because if that glass cleaner starts to bead up, uh, or fish eye, whatever you want to call it, that's actually a um, a very good indicator of some sort of contaminant on that surface. Uh, and what we would want to recommend, um, you know, in that instance, wh wherever you see that glass cleaner start to bead up, it starts to fish eye. Um, we need to make sure that we're taking steps to uh, to remove that contamination. So. Um, whether it's a Scotch Bright or if it's our our Power Clean Aid sponges, uh, which would be my preference, obviously, um, you know we want to we want to give that that part a good scrub, um, you know, with uh, with some sort some sort of abrasion media to uh, um, you know to, to to help remove that contamination. So give it a, a scrub with the Power Clean Aid sponge, wipe everything off, and then go ahead and spray that part again, and um, and look again to see if it's uh, if that contamination has been removed. And we, we really don't want to move forward in the installation process um, un, until we see a good wet out of that glass cleaner, you know, along the entire uh, along the entire bond line, along the entire frit line. Uh, but then once we see that good wet out of that, uh, you know, that frit area, we know that we've got a nice clean part and we're ready to move forward, uh, you know, with with whatever uh, with whatever system you've got uh, with whatever Sika system you've got uh, on hand. So, um, you know. Uh, just a couple of uh, important points about about glass cleaner there, and and kind of, and how its role has kind of evolved, um, you know, over the past couple of years. 
Fantastic, Mike. I think that does it. We did get a few more questions that had to do more with specialty vehicles. We'll take those offline, we'll respond to those customers uh, individually, but you've done a fantastic job for us this afternoon. I want to thank you. And uh, with that, then we'll turn that back over to our host, Eric McHale. Thanks, thanks, Ron and Mike, and uh, for Josh for uh, helping to field questions during the presentation. That concludes the final Q&A portion of today's webinar. If you have any further questions or if you need any additional information, please contact your local sales SICA sales rep, or you can visit, visit us online at SICAindustry.com. You can also contact our customer service department at 1-800-688-7452. For technical questions, please e email the technical service de department at tsmh at us.seca.com. As we conclude our time, a brief survey will come up on your screen. If everyone could, please take a couple minutes to fill it out. That would be greatly appreciated as it helps us gather feedback and make improvements to our presentations. I'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their schedules to attend today's session. Special thanks to you, Mike. Ray, for leading this discussion and for sharing your expertise on SICA's adhesive solutions for the auto glass replacement industry. Thank you all again and have a great day, everyone.